on a Tuesday. Monday. You better have it on a Wednesday. Monday. You better have it on a Thursday. Monday. You better have it on a Friday. Monday. You better have it on a Saturday. You better have it on a Sunday. It's called Victory because I got it. Got Don't it. you know why I got it? Victory. I got it. I said I got it. Victory. Victory. I got it. I got it. I said I got it. I said I got it. Said you got it, 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 we 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 got it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Absolute victory. Victory. What I mean by victory, 1 John 3, 2 says, Right now I'm a son of God, I'm a child of God. It hasn't been made evident what I shall be, but I know that when he shall appear, I shall be like him. That's victory. It will be just like Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a lot of things that, that we say, and uh, I'm like one of the Bereans. I'm going to go home and check it out. You know, I'm going to check it out. And uh, I heard this yesterday, and I've heard this a lot. You know, people say uh, they're trying to, uh, trying to convince people by witnessing to them that God loves them. And they say... Um, if you were the only one who ever lived, Jesus would die for you. And again, I'm not arguing that. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, why do we speculate? Why don't we just say what he did? Amen. He wrote my name yeah. in the Lamb's Book of Life yeah. before the foundation of the world. Yeah. He set the times and boundaries for me to live. And at the right time in the fullness of, of, of time, he sent his Holy Spirit to convince and convict me of my sinfulness and my need for Jesus. And he saved me and saved me eternally. I know he died for the whole world, John 3, 16, but Jesus laid down his life for the sheep. <laughs> oh, he pleased the Father. So we can speculate if... if if one person was the only person that ever lived, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue that. But I'm gonna tell you what he did. He had a plan in mind for me, and he went to, he lived a holy and perfect life and went to Calvary for me. He died to save me, and I got. <laughs> Hallelujah! How you spell it? Say it again. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. If you're a believer, you got it. Yes. I've got it. I've got it.
message in Hebrews 13 20 we thank you for the victory that is in these verses and may you give the congregation ears and hearts to receive this word help me to make it plain and understandable that we can grasp it and live in the way that's pleasing in your sight we thank you in Jesus name amen Hebrews 13 20 now may the God of peace who brought up Jesus excuse me uh, may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And so we talked about uh, last week, this is part two, prayer for our completion. And the idea is that we are going to be perfect, and he's praying for it because our Savior is perfect, and he is going to complete the job. And without, without a perfect salvation and a perfect Savior, then works will never accomplish anything because at the end of all that you've done, you never know if you've done enough. And, and the answer is we can't do enough. But through Jesus Christ our Lord, there is perfection or the completion that's through him. So this is the prayer for our perfection. And I want you to understand that. See, as I pastor a church, people say, well, Oh, that's, that's got to be real hard. Well, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm pastoring a church in the name of Jesus Christ and by his power. It's not my own power, not my resources. And uh, so when you look at Jesus Christ and who he is and what he's done and what he's given to us, then we can live life in victory. Amen. Amen. In victory. Appreciate the praise and worship because it goes along with what I'm trying to help you to understand. So we're looking at uh, today, the great shepherd of the sheep, and then we're going to look at through the blood of the everlasting covenant, and these, are, these come out of verse 20, the great shepherd of the sheep. Now, we looked at, we have peace due to his resurrection, all right? Hebrews 13, 20, now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead. Now, since the resurrection of Jesus, and since I'm, res I'm going to be resurrected, you and I are going to have a glorified body. We have peace when it comes to death. Amen? Because I know when I die, I'm absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 says that people all their lives had the fear of death. But Jesus took a body and he, and he lived a holy and perfect life. He died. He tasted death for every one of us who are believers. And therefore, I don't have the fear of death anymore. Why? Because, again, death is a doorway that's going to lead me to an eternal relationship with Jesus Christ, unclouded by sin. Praise God. Unclouded by sin. And uh, so Hebrews uh, 13, 20 now talks about the great shepherd of the sheep. And let me help you understand the great shepherd of the sheep. You see that in the scripture? Now, I mean, the God of peace who brought up the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep. Okay, uh, praise the Lord. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at easy worship. Tell easy worship. They don't need to tell me it's easy worship. <laughs> they clouded up my vision of scripture. <laughs> Say, back off, you know. Do the, do the John the Baptist thing. You must decrease. <laughs> Say, Amen. So, Praise his holy name. That great shepherd of the sheep. There's about four things that I want, to, want you to sh uh, see in the great shepherd of the sheep. First of all, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. We're looking at, we got a great salvation. We got a great high priest. We have a great struggle. And that's why we got a great shepherd. You see, to keep things consistently. To keep them very consistent. Hebrews 2, 3 says, How should we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Now we got this great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. We have a great salvation. And I'm heading to, that's why we got a great 
shepherd. We got a great salvation, but we got a great shepherd to lead and guide us in our salvation. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.14, seeing then that we have a great high priest. So we got a great salvation, victory. We got a great high priest, victory. Amen. We got a great high priest who was, who was passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. Because our Savior is seated at the right hand of the Father. He lives. He makes intercession for us. We're saved, and we're saved to the uttermost. We have the victory. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm going to be glorified. Praise his holy name. Victory. Now, I'm not saying I may get every job I want, every promotion I want. Those things are temporary. But I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So have you if you are a believer. Amen. Amen. Victory. So we have so great a salvation. Now we have a great high priest, Hebrews 10.32. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. So notice, first of all, before we start, we understand we got a great salvation, a great high priest, because after we're saved, we're going to have great struggles. Amen. 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 Great struggles. We're going to be, uh, we're in battle. We fight against the world, the flesh, and the, uh, and the devil. The world, the flesh, the devil. We have spiritual warfare. There are great struggles. But before we start our struggle, again, understand we got a great salvation and a great high priest. The great salvation is going to deliver us. The great high priest is making intercession for us. And so we have a great struggle. It's good to know when, as you're entering into or you're dealing with your great struggles, you already have a great salvation and you have a great high priest. Is this making sense to anybody? Amen. And so, you, and so the Bible tells us in Hebrews 12, 1, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, then let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So we have a great cloud of witnesses. We got people who made it people who, who can encourage us, people whose lives... It's, it's, and so every now and then, it's good to read the biography of Christians who went before us, read some of the things, read some of the struggles they went through. It's encouraging because the same God that brought them through can bring you through, and he will bring you through. So then we have a great salvation. We've got a great high priest, and we've got a great cloud of witnesses, but we've got a great struggle. And so, but we're not left alone because Hebrews 13, 20 says, Jesus Christ is that great shepherd of the sheep. See, he's greater. Our God is greater. Our shepherd is greater than anything. We're, we got a salvation. Uh, we got a high priest, but we got a shepherd. The high priest is in heaven. He's passed through the heaven. The shepherd is with us through the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? The shepherd. And I can see the wolf, but if I see the wolf and I see my shepherd, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Because he's got something to beat off the wolves. And that's the idea there. My, I got a great shepherd. The shepherd who lead me uh, in the paths of righteousness. The shepherd who lead me through still waters. Lead me to green pastures. I got a great shepherd. It doesn't matter what 2021 is going to bring. I got a great shepherd who is with me. And I shall not want, praise the Lord. I'm not going to lack anything because of my shepherd. So we got so great a salvation. We got a great high priest. We got a great struggles. But we got a greater shepherd. Everybody with me? And then it's through the blood. Through the blood. Through the blood, I praise God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9.11. Hebrews 9.11. The Bible tells us this. But Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come. 
with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation. In other words, that's his body. See, John 1, 14 says Jesus tabernacled with us. The word, uh, when you read that scripture, John 1, 14, uh, and it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The idea, he tabernacled among us. And so Jesus in his body, he lived a holy, precious, perfect life and he actually died on Calvary for you and me. And so the Bible says in Hebrews 9, Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. This is not the earthly tabernacle that, was, that the Moses and the people made. This is not a building. It's Jesus Christ himself. Look at Hebrews 9 and 12. It says this. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. You got that? So we're talking about the blood of the covenant. And so he's the great shepherd, and it's through the covenant, the blood covenant. Jesus, with his own blood, entered the most holy place once for all, Amen. having obtained eternal redemption. It's a new year, but it's the same message. The blood of Jesus will never lose its power. Amen. It's the blood of Jesus. And so because of the blood of Jesus, we are going to be complete. Amen. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. Now, I don't, I can't understand, I don't understand how all that totally happened. But he entered, the Bible says, with his own blood. He entered the most holy place. And he did it once for all, obtain eternal redemption. Hebrews 9.24 says, For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. You know, to appear, in the, that's, that's, that is a legal term, to appear. It's like uh, we got a, a summons to be in court. And uh, so uh, we get a lawyer, and the lawyer says, I'll, I'm going to appear for you. And so you don't have to come to this, this preliminary because I'm going to appear uh, in your place. Jesus appeared in heaven for you and me. Woo! Victory. <laughs> I got it. I got it on a Sunday. Got it on a Monday. I got it. I got it in two, I got it in uh, 2020. Amen. Got it in 2021. Amen. I'm gonna have it in 2022. I had it in 1974. I got it, and I'm and I'm gonna keep it because he's keeping you and me. You see what we're saying? Amen. Jesus appeared in the courtroom of God for you and me with His own blood. Hallelujah! Yes. If you get a grip on this. You won't be running around sad and sickened and depressed. Yeah. I'm on my way to glory. Yeah. Jesus appeared before me. That's why when, I, when you and I go to the judgment seat of Christ, I mean, and, and the Bible says, uh, the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to appear. That has to do with our works. But we're not going to be cast out of heaven. Because Jesus has already taken care of that with his own blood. Once forever, he appeared in heaven for you and me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13, 21 now tells us, because of that, he says that we, uh, we should be made complete. Hebrews 13, 21, to make you complete in every good work. In every good work. Notice, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight. My brothers and sisters, don't, don't try to do anything on your own. Don't let folks convince you that, uh, you know, that you've got to do this and got to do that and give you a vision and you've got to get a vision. And you've got to, people, will, people will be so critical uh, to us as believers. People love, you know, uh, people love to condemn us as believers and other believers. You, know, you say, well, what would you do uh, Sunday afternoon? Oh, man, I, I tell you what, man, I, I, I was in church in the morning, Sunday school, I had a great day. I praised the Lord, and 
and then I come home and, you know, I sat around with my wife. We fell asleep and all this. You didn't go back to church? No, I didn't go back. Well, man, you ought to be going back to church. How dare you and your wife enjoy each other and fall asleep? If you was a real Christian, I mean, don't you understand? People are dying. You sh if you ain't going to church, you should be witnessing. People love to do that kind of stuff to you. You know, I mean, put you under a toad of uh, a ton of uh, and a big load of guilt. Amen. But I, I tell them, I said, Jesus already appeared for me. Amen. In heaven. With his own blood. Romans 8 says, there is, now for, there is uh, therefore now no condemnation. You can talk all you want. If you want to go to church, fine. I sat there with my wife and went to sleep and enjoyed it. And then we got up and we did some things together. Praise the Lord. And so, praise his holy name. So Hebrews 13, 21 says, because of who Jesus is, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 You with me? So in this 21st verse, uh, the first thing is that uh, make you complete in every good work. So... Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10. I just want to look at some, some scriptures here. Help you understand why we're perfect. And why all we got to do is surrender to our Lord. And he works in us both to will and to do. Hebrews 2.10 says. For it became him. That's Jesus. For whom are all things and by whom are all things. In bringing many sons as sons and daughters unto glory. It doesn't say he brought them to salvation. He brought them to justification. He's bringing us to glory. Whom he justified, he glorified. He's bringing us to glory. And so what did the Bible say? It says, it became him. Uh, and so the end of that scripture says, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. So if you make Jesus perfect, and you and I are in Jesus. And, and, and I notice here, let's, that's Hebrews 2.10. Let's go to Hebrews 2.11. For both he who sanctifies, that's Jesus, and those who are being sanctified, as us, are all of one. If you make Jesus perfect, and I'm in Jesus, then you made me perfect because of the spiritual union. It says, notice, and it says, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. See, the captain is perfect and we are one with him and we are not only brought to justification but to glory. And so that's how we are perfected. It's in and through Jesus Christ. We're, we're seen with him. Hebrews 5, 8, notice, because Jesus is perfected and we're in him, then the work that will be done in us is through him and because of him. Hebrews 5.8 says, Though he were a son, though he was a son, yet he learned. And the word learn means experience. Jesus experienced obedience by the things which he suffered. Hebrews 5.9 And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him. You see, the reason we're going to be fine is because Jesus was made perfect. And, and, and because Jesus and we, are, the believers, are all of one. We are in him. Are you understand what I'm saying? And so you don't have to go outside of Jesus for anything. Nothing. You live your, your life in Jesus. You're... you're your captain has been made perfect. So we go to him in prayer, and uh, we uh, trust him, and we follow his direction and guidance. That's, that's how simple it is. He's been made perfect. And so we have a perfect standing, and, and Jesus is working in us that we will be more and more like him every day. Hebrews 7, 19 says this. It says, for the law made nothing perfect. See that? In other words, uh, the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw near unto God. The law, see, 
no matter what you did, no matter what the high priest did, and they went in, and, uh, and at the uh, Day of Atonement, and they, everything was taken care of, that only took care of the sins for that year. And it had to be done every year. And so there was a remembrance, guess what, your work is never going to end. As long as you live, you, and that's where people think we are in the new covenant. Say, Jesus saves you, but don't you slip up. If you slip up, you lost it. No, we've been made perfect in Jesus Christ. And so you make the Savior perfect. Jesus is the, is the chief cornerstone. The apostles are the, are, 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 excuse me, are the foundation. When you look at our salvation, we are perfect in him. So the Bible says the law made nothing perfect. That's why if you're trying to get to heaven by works, it'll never make you perfect. Because there's always more to do. It'll never make you perfect. But it says the bringing in of a better hope. Through Jesus Christ. That's what, that's what causes us to draw near to God. All you got to do is draw near to God. You don't have to go through all kind of steps. Someone says, uh, and they say, you know, if you take one step, God will take two. I, I say, well, look here. You know, if, you take, if you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Amen. You draw near to God. Let's forget this one step, two step. Because <laughs> I need it more than God. I need God to take more than two steps for me. <laughs> So if he's only going to take two steps, I'm still lost. But thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. See, there's, there's scripture in the, in the Gospels that, that tell us about a terrible situation. And the Bible says, and the Savior came to where he was. Where he was. He didn't just take two steps. He came all the way. All the way. Amen. That's why we sing that, that song about uh, he came from heaven to earth, to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross. <laughs> Thank you. How many steps did he take? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> All we got to do is praise him and lift our, Lord, we lift your name on high. When you, when the Bible tells us when I was without strength, a paralyzed man can't take a step. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hebrews, I'm going to drop down to Hebrews 9.11. Hebrews 9.11 says, but Christ has become a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Hebrews 10.1 says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things that can, that can never with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Only Jesus Christ and, and his finished work on Calvary. Hebrews 10.14 says, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And my brothers and sisters, you are being sanctified. You have been sanctified positionally, and you are being sanctified practically. Because the Spirit of God is in you, and you are being sanctified. Again, there, there are some things that you used to be able to do that you can't do now. Because you are being sanctified. There are some things that didn't bother you that you look at now, you look, well, you, ah, you don't do them. And there are some things you, you strive to do that you never would have thought you put that much effort into it. Why? Because you are being sanctified. So the rest of that, rest of that verse says in 321, it says, He works in us what is well-pleasing in his sight. He does that. It's not what we're trying to do. I hear people say, I'm trying to do my best. I'm trying to stand the test. I'm trying to work hard. Listen, the Bible says that when you and I get saved, Jesus works in us. Jesus. And so it's our prayer. Father, work in us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. He does it through Jesus Christ, and then Christ gets the glory. Amen? So one day in Revelation chapter 4, one day in heaven, we're going to be in heaven with white robes and crowns on our heads, and we're going to take them, the crowns off 
and lay them at Jesus' feet and say, you, you, know, you know they're yours. They're yours. Because you brought me from a mighty long way. Took me out of darkness and placed me in the marvelous light. And then the Paul ends that, or the writer of Hebrews ends that, that chapter or that verse saying, Amen. Amen means so be it. Amen. So be it. Everybody with me? It means, it means let it be. So be it. Jesus, the word has promised what God is going to do for us. And uh, Hebrews 13, 20, may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And then he says, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. So be it. If God's going to work this in my life, so be it. That's what amen means. Let it be. Let it happen. Lord, let your will be done. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. In other words, I just want to let God have his way. Let God have his way in our lives. And he will do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or imagine. So, so we quit trying in our own effort and we trust. So this morning as I get up, I, tr I pray, I trust that God is going to work through me his will. Amen? We, I, mean, I look at the service and I look at Brother Mike and, and you, you hear people are participating. God working in us so that we can worship and call on his holy name. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm through today. Uh, this is part two of prayer for our completion. This prayer will be answered because it's in the will of God. We shall be complete. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone that has this hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. Praise the Lord. God working in us. God uh, uh, establishing and producing in us his will and making us more and more like Jesus. Everybody okay with that? Hey, all right. That's what the amen means. Let it be. You remember the Beatles song, Let It Be? Let it be, let it be. <laughs> it said, when in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Well, I changed that around. <laughs> I, I like our sister Mary. She's a wonderful person, but she's just like me. She, she needed Christ. Amen. Times of trouble, when things change, you say, listen, let it be. Let the word of God be in my life. And we need wisdom and all that stuff. Heavenly Father, be it unto me according to your will. That's the idea of amen. When we say amen, we're saying so be it. God says, I'm going to do this in you. He said, Father, I see it. So be it. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together today. We honor and praise you. As we finish up that prayer, uh, part two, your prayer for completion, for perfection, because of our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for the trust that we have. And we're seeing how you're working in us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, Sister, Sister Carol, we got any, any uh, announcements? Got birthdays? Amen. Okay, all right. And so let's remember the bereaved family uh, of Sister Orly Ware. Okay. Uh, and um, bir blessed birthday is Brian Jackson. <laughs> That's the little one. All right. Ann Clark. Amen. She'll be 95. Brian Molnar. Amen. How old are you going to be, Brian? 69. 69. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we're going to sing Blessed Birthday. We have uh, Brian, Ann, and... Uh, oh, we got Brian, Ann, and Brian. <laughs> so we're going to sing Blessed Birthday to our sister and our brothers. Ready? To you, blessed birthday. To you. 
blessed birthday, sister and brothers. Blessed birthday to you. Revelation 4.11, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Uh, Sister uh, uh, Dorfine, anything else you, we need to know about? Uh... Okay, all right, thank you. All right, no other messages? Then that concludes our, our time, our service. You ready? God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. Till we meet again. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. Until we meet again. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us till we meet again. Together let us sing Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. You are dismissed.